Thank you for dropping by for my daily devotions. And it is Tuesday, November 7th, 2023. And we're going to look at Revelation chapter 15, Matthew chapter 22, Psalm 126, and Leviticus chapter 4. And uh, yesterday we read the 14th chapter of Revelation. And part of what it talks about is the harvest, okay, verses 14 through 16. I looked, and there before me was a white cloud, and seated on the cloud was one like the Son of Man, with a crown of gold on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then another angel came out of the temple and, and called in a loud voice to him who was sitting on the cloud, Take your sickle and reap, because the time to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who was seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. It's going to be a harvest at the end of time, and he's going to come and harvest his crop, which is people who have surrendered their life to Jesus, and he's going to reap the harvest, and we're going to all go to be with him. It's a harvest, and we want to see as many people as we can come to Christ so they can be a part of the positive end of the harvest. There's another part of the harvest, too, that's pretty clear, too, in the Bible, and it is those who are not Christ will be separated and bundled up and cast into the fire. So we want to get as many people in for the positive side of the harvest so they can be harvested for the kingdom of God, as many people as we can. Let's take a minute and pray. Father, there's so much to pray about, so much upheaval and death and dying and difficulty and war in the world, and we pray that, that you would be the solution, Father. Uh, there's craziness in our country in America, and I pray that you would be the solution, that you'd raise up your people uh, to run the show. So we, we trust you with it all. We pray that you'd speak to us today. Bring peace to the earth, Father. Bring peace to the earth. And I pray that you would speak to us today and bring peace to our hearts. Change our hearts by the truth we find in your word and make us fresh and new because we heard from you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 16th, 15th chapter of the book of Revelation. I saw in heaven another great and marvelous sign, seven angels with the seven last plagues. Last, because with them God's wrath is completed. And I saw what looked like a sea of glass mixed with fire, and standing beside the sea, those who had been victorious over the beast in his image and over the number of his name. They held harps with them by, with them by God and sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. Great and marvelous are your deeds, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, King of the ages. Who will not fear you, O Lord, and bring glory to your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. After this I looked, and in heaven the temple that is, the tabernacle of the testimony, was opened. Out of the temple came the seven angels with the seven plagues. They were dressed in clean, shining linen and wore golden sashes around their chests. Then one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bowls filled with the wrath of God who lives forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power, and no one could enter the temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. Matthew chapter 22. All I have to do is land in the right place here real quick. Matthew chapter 22. Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. Then he sent some more servants and said, Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and fattened calf, cattle, have been butchered and everything is ready. Come for the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went off one to his this his field and another to his business. The rest seized his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and he sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, "The wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. Go to the street corners." and invite to the banquet everyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find 
both good and bad, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came came in to see the guest, he noticed that a man was there with no wedding, wearing not wearing wedding clothes. Friend, he asked, how did you get in with, here without wedding clothes? The man was speechless. Then the king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot, throw him outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are invited, but few are chosen. Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him in his words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians' teacher. They said, we know you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by men because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him the de a denarius. And he asked them, Whose portrait is this? And whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. He said, Then give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed. So they left him and went away. I like to say he shut their mouths wide open. That same day, the Sadducees who say there is no resurrection came to him with a question. Teacher, they said, Moses told us that if a man dies without having children, his brother must marry the widow and have children for him. Now there were seven brothers among them. The first one married and died, and since he had no children, he left his wife, he left his wife to his brother. The same thing happened to the second and the third brother right down to the seventh. Finally, the woman died. Now then, at the resurrection, whose wife will she be of the seven, since all of them were married to her? Jesus replied, You are in error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of, uh, of God. At the resurrection, people will neither marry or be given in marriage. They will be like angels in heaven. But about the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what God said? what God said to you? I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. He's not the God of the dead, but of the living. When the crowds heard this, they were astonished at his teaching. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, and Phar the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. While the Pharisees were gathering together, Jesus asked them, What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? The son of David, they replied. He said to them, How is it then that David, speaking by the Holy Spirit, calls him Lord? For he says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. Then, If then David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one could say a word in reply. And from that day on, no one dared to, dared to ask him any more questions. Again, he shut their mouths wide open. Psalm 126. When the Lord brought back the captives to Zion, we were like men who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. And we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams of the ne in the Negev. Those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. He who goes out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with him. And then Leviticus chapter 4. Leviticus chapter 4. The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, When anyone sins unintentionally and does what is forbidden in any of the Lord's commands, I'm going to have a drink of coffee. If, an, if the anointed priest sins, bringing guilt on the people, he must bring to the Lord a young bull without defect as a sin offering for the sin he has committed. He is to present the bull at the entrance to the tent of meeting before the Lord. He is to lay his hands on the head and slaughter it before the Lord. Then the anointed priest shall take some of the bull's blood and carry it to the tent of meeting. 
is to dip his finger into the blood and sprinkle some of it seven times before the Lord in front of the curtain of the sanctuary. The priest shall then put some of the blood on the horns of the altar of fragrant incense in it that is before the Lord in the tent of meeting. The rest of the bull's blood he shall pour out at the base of the altar of burnt offering at the entrance to the tent of meeting. He shall remove all the fat from the bull of the sin offering, the fat that covers the inner parts and is connected to them. Both kidneys with the fat on them near the loins and the covering of the liver, which he will remove with the, with the kidneys, just as the fat is removed from the ox sacrificed as a fellowship offering, then the priest shall burn them on the altar of burnt offering. But the hide of the bull and all its flesh, as well as the head and the legs and the inner parts and offal, that is all the rest of the bull, he must take outside the camp and place in a ceremony, place ceremonially clean where the ashes are thrown and burn it in a wood fire on the ash heap. If the whole Israelite community, community sins unintentionally and does what is forbidden in any of the Lord's commands, even though the community is unaware of the matter, they are guilty. When, he, when they become aware of the sin they committed, the assembly must bring a young bull as a sin offering and present it before the tent of meeting. The elders of the community are to lay their hands on the bull's head before the Lord, and the bull shall be slaughtered before the Lord. Then the anointed priest is to take some of the bull's blood into the tent of meeting. He shall dip his finger into the blood and sprinkle it before the Lord seven times in front of the curtain. He is to put some of the blood on, on the horns of the altar that is before the Lord in the tent of meeting. The rest of the blood he shall pour out at the base of the altar of burnt offering at the entrance to the tent of meeting. He shall remove all the fat from it and burn it on the altar and do and do with this bull just as he did with the bull for the sin offering. In this way, the priest will make atonement for them and they will be forgiven. Then he shall take the bull outside the camp and burn it as he burned the first bull. This is the sin offering for the community. Then a leader, when a leader sins unintentionally and does what is forbidden, in any of the com commands of the Lord his God, he is guilty. When he is made unaware, when he is made aware of his sin and co he committed, he must bring as his offering the male goat without defect. He is to lay his hands on the goat's head and slaughter it at the place where the burnt offering is slaughtered before the Lord. It is a sin offering. When the priest shall take some of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offering and pour out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. He shall burn all the fat on the altar as he burned the fat of the fellowship offering. In this way, the priest will make atonement for the man's sin and he will be forgiven. If a member of the community sins unintentionally and does what is forbidden in any of the Lord's commands, he is guilty. When he is made aware of the sin of, he committed, he must bring as his offering for the sin he committed a female goat without defect. He is to lay his hands on the head of the sin offering and slaughter it at the place of the burnt offering. Then the priest is to take some of the blood with his finger and put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offering and pour out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. He shall remove all the fat just as the fat was removed from the fellowship offering. And the priest shall burn it on the altar as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. In this way, the priest will make atonement for him and he will be forgiven. If he brings a lamb as his sin offering, he is to bring a female without defect. He is to lay his hands on its head and slaughter it for the sin offering at the place where the burnt offering is slaughtered. Then the priest shall take some of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offering and pour out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. He shall remove all the fat just as the fat is removed from the lamb of the fellowship offering and the priest shall burn it on the altar on top of the offerings made to the Lord by fire. In this way, the priest will make atonement for him for the sin he has committed, and he will be forgiven. Well, the Lord has spoken. Let's take a minute and pray. Father, thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for addressing our lives. I pray that you would change our hearts, Father, by the truth we find in your word, and make us new and different because we heard from you today inspire us throughout the day as we uh, live in the midst of your word. Help us to be mindful of what you said and live it. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.